Are you curious about the Amazon full loop for software engineers? So full disclosure, I did sign some NDAs and that means that I'm not going to be going in depth about the problems that I uh, solved for these interviews or really talk that much about the people that I met. It's just going to be like a vague outline of the interview. That way I can still, you know, tell you about it. So I was contacted through LinkedIn by two recruiters and it was for one, uh, two different positions. One was a software engineering two, and the other one was a front end engineering two. And I'm not really that qualified, so I don't, I'm not sure if I'm good enough to be an engineer two yet. But I figured since I was going for other positions at the time anyway, that I would use these interviews as practice. Yeah, so uh, since it didn't really hurt to go for these positions, I decided to send my resume out to these two recruiters. And they got back to me pretty quickly, both within 24 hours. And which I've actually learned is a sign that the company is actually interested because before this, I would, you know, wait for days, weeks at a time, like, are they going to respond? But no, if they don't respond relatively quickly within a day or two, they're probably not interested. So yeah, I got my responses and I sent them like, I responded to their email about, you know, my inquire, my resume and things like that. And we started on the tracks that for the two separate positions. And uh, since there's two, I'm going to start with the software engineering position. I'm going to set up chapters in this YouTube video. So you can, if you want to skip to the front end engineering section, you can just click that. For the software engineering role, it didn't start from the phone interview. It actually started from an objective assessment. So I was sent this objective ass assessment that I was scheduled and, you know, forced to take within seven days. And of course, I took the entire seven days to prepare. And when I took it, it was actually two roughly leak code mediums and I was able to solve it within I think an hour and a half time frame and uh, in addition to that there was like a super long leadership survey but I was able to pass both my solutions with all test cases passed I think it was like seven or eight test cases like with edge cases and everything and the day later I was told that I uh, was selected to move on towards the phone interview so after some back and forth with, the, with emails, I uh, told him that I wanted to schedule my phone interview a couple weeks out, which is another thing I learned from this process is that, you know, they're not really in a rush. So if you want to schedule things a couple weeks, you know, almost a month in advance, that can be arranged. And I've actually been able to um, reschedule a different interview before, like phone interview, months, you know, in advance. And then actually was able to delay it even longer because I just wanted to have some more time to prepare. Okay, so, but for this particular interview, I was given two weeks to prepare for the phone interview. And when the day finally came, I was so nervous because this was my first interview, a phone interview with one of these big tech companies, you know. And I, I didn't really prepare very well. I was like leak coding up until the last minute, okay. And this was like five minutes before the interview. I hadn't even tested Chime yet, which is Amazon's video chat application that they use for these interviews and just a lot of other stuff in general, I think. And so I didn't know how to connect my webcam to the application in time. So he, my interviewer was in the, you know, in the web chat with his face and everything. And then I had to fumble around like text in the ch chat box. And I said, I'm going to have to call you. So I called him through the, the hotline or whatever, and I got put his extension in and we got connected and we were able to start from there. It was like, I think, I think we were like five minutes late or something. So after a couple of leadership questions that I really think I fumbled around with, I moved on to the next section, which was, I thought was like some kind of weird system design or something. It was actually a really strange question. I hadn't gotten anything like this before on the code. It was actually surprisingly practical. And uh, so I thought, I, I just went over like 10 minutes basically of clarifying questions. And then I was like, wait, am I supposed to be coding this right now? And he said, yeah, this is your coding question. And I was like, okay, uh, all right. So I just like quickly started coding some really inefficient code. It was like a brute force solution. And uh, like, obviously I didn't get on to move on to the next stage of for this position, but I did learn a lot, you know, it was my first attempt at one of these things and it actually I, I think it helped calm my nerves a lot for the next one all right so for the second position that i went for with amazon it was a front-end engineer two position which again I, I wasn't necessarily qualified for but you know who cares i'm going for it anyway we're code phonies right 
this one, I didn't start off with objective assessment. I started with a phone interview, which now, you know, I know is possible. And with this phone interview, I got Chime set up correctly beforehand and everything. So it went pretty smoothly. The leadership questions, I didn't do so great in. I hadn't practiced that very much. I just, you know, wrote down some generic answers for mine. And with a coding question, you know, I thought I was doing well, but then towards the end, I just completely drew a blank with a very obvious JavaScript question. It was like something about promises. And for some reason, I completely forgot how promises worked. And I just straight up told him, like, promise, this, this promise thing is really confusing me. And uh, we just moved on from there. But by some miracle, I guess, I actually made it through to the on-sites for this one, even though, you know, I thought I did terribly in the phone interviews. So because I was so excited and I really wanted to, you know, give it my best shot, I did like 20 interviews, mock interviews on Pramp.com. It's a P-R-A-M-P dot com. I'm not sponsored or anything. It's just a great website that I use to prepare. I met a lot of cool people. I actually learned a lot while I was doing those like coding interviews and behavioral interviews to prepare for the on-sites. So if you're preparing right now, I highly recommend it. I think Algo Expert has mock interviews too. A bunch of different websites are doing it now. And yeah, after the phone interviews, I scheduled my on-sites uh, two weeks after the results of the phone interview, which I was hoping for more, but they seemed like they were in a rush. They wouldn't really budge that much on this. Some other companies I know of have you know, extended me much longer than this. And, but you know, I just worked with it. After two weeks of lead coding and doing mock interviews, whenever I started my first interview with these guys, it felt like everything went out the window. Uh, the questions actually ended up being easier than I thought they were going to be. But still, because, you know, I was under so much stress, I guess, I, I felt like I, I was, wasn't was performing as well as I could have. So after about five hours of programming and talking, programming and talking, you know, answering leadership question after leadership question, doing my system design interview, it was over and I really didn't feel like I had gotten it because, you know, you can just tell. And it's one of their policies as Amazon that they don't they don't tell you how you did afterwards, which kind of sucks. But I can I can tell that a lot of people would be angry with the feedback that they got, and it would just waste a lot of company time. But really, during these interviews, you can tell how you're doing if you self reflect a little bit. And I can know I know for sure that I wasn't coding fast enough. Um, I was making mistakes left and right because I was trying to code faster. And it was, I was just wasting time by having to go back and correct these mistakes. And a lot of times there were simple mistakes that I should have seen, you know, and this, you know, just conveys someone who is reckless. And also my knowledge wasn't as in-depth as you know, I'm pretty sure that they would have liked. So of course I wasn't given an offer, but you know, it just comes with the territory and I'm just grateful for the opportunity to go through the entire process like this and get some uh, get a behind the scenes look at the interview process that I would have never gotten to know otherwise. You know, no amount of Googling is gonna let you know what it feels like to be in the hot seat and just go through that entire gauntlet of interviews. And before I forget, I think I know who my bar raiser was. And I think I know because the tone got a lot more serious whenever he, you know, started asking me the questions and they were just a lot more difficult than the other interviews. 